you. I'm so happy. <laughs> now, you know, I, I, I'd rather hug you than eat you. I, I don't know oh, this, this, this tough aggression thing you have going on here. I, I, I'm a... I'm a I'm a little bit outside. Well, you know, Here, I beat you. You beat me. Right now, this explains the entire film. Just this thirty-second <laughs> exchange with the two of you explains the entire in crappy Mother's show, Day film. Show. That's that's it. This film is a hoot and a holler, guys. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. It is. Can, can I can I adopt you? Of course. I'm a, I'm always up for adoption. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this is so hilarious. This oh, is you. old school slapstick comedy that we don't see anymore. Yeah, absolutely. And it's and it's also very East Coast. Very much so, yeah. Yeah, definitely so. Very much so. I'm from Philly, so I reckon oh. <laughs> Yeah, I've been down there many times, Philly. Or as they say, Philly. Well, you're from, well, you're from Scranton, right? <laughs> I'm from Wil Wilkes-Barre, Scranton area. Yep, but uh, th where did the idea, because Bill, this is your first feature that you've written. Correct. Correct. Um, and Dan, you're directing and you're editing. I can just imagine the editing process for this film, and we'll get into that in a minute. But where, very where did the idea for this film arise, Bill? Well, it's it's based on a lot of stuff that my, uh, from my mother and my and my, my mother's seven sisters. Of course, were, it is uh, just hysterical. <laughs> they were they were fighting all the time. I used to sit and watch them fight because they, they were ridiculous fights about nothing and everything. So uh, that's where it stemmed from. It initially started off as a 15-minute short play that I produced and, and, and had it shown in New York for a few weeks. And it was simply called Mother's Day at that particular time. So uh, I did. it was a 15-minute play, and then I just decided, geez, I have so much material. Let me just try to extend this. And that's, that's how it happened, really. Something tells me it wasn't that hard to extend it. Well, no, you know, he didn't I, have to write. He didn't have to write it. All he had to do was transcribe all the different <laughs> things that actually happened to him growing up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. That's truer than I want to admit. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I watched this film and I couldn't help but recall a couple decades ago to one of my brother's wedding, and somebody said to my dad, "They said, my God, do they hate each other?" And my dad says, no, no, no. If they did not carry on like this and insult each other, he goes, then I know something would be wrong. Mm. Yeah. And, and, well, you know, everybody, everybody has quirky families. I mean, everybody yep. does. nobody has really a normal family where everything goes right. It's just, you know. If you do, you're pod people. That's right. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, Dan, how did this find its way into your loving hands? Well, it's funny because um, Bill and I worked together many years ago. I, I shot a movie, another comedy that Bill was in you know, as an actor, and I became friends with his brother, and we just you know, stayed in touch over the years, and they, he, he knew me, I knew of him. Suddenly he wrote this funny little script and sent it to me and said, hey, would you be interested? And... Um, as soon as I read it, I loved it, and then I said, yeah, I'm in. And then he said, do you think we could shoot it in eight days? And then in silence on my end for about 30 seconds of, like, eight days. Um, and then my brain started twirling around going, well, you know, like, that would be a challenge. Sure, we could do it. I mean, you keep your locations minimal. Um, yeah. You've got the pain in the neck aspect of filming because you're filming in a car for a few scenes, and that's always... So much fun for a director. Right. Uh, it's always a challenge. Yeah, it's... <laughs> um, but this is... Uh, it's doable, but then you've got to have a cast that lets it be right. doable, that are skilled right. enough at this kind of comedy. Because not... Right. There are plenty of actors who can do comedy, but this is so specific. Right. Well, you know, the, the interesting thing, we... It, it was, it was definitely a serendipity type of 
a situation because I I was talking to Bill the other day. I, I don't know if we tried to do it again, if we could actually pull it off. Everything everything had to go perfect for us to get it done in the amount of time that we had. And between the cast and the crew, especially the, 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 the cast was unbelievable. The we, we sat down before we started shooting and, and basically just said to everybody, you know, listen, I, I will bring my A game. Please, everybody do the same. Um, and if we didn't get the caliber of cast that we had, there was no way we could have gotten through it because they needed to be right on and know, know their stuff and be able to do, you know, two or three takes of a, of a, of a shot and know that we got it and move on. Because if we didn't have that, then, you know, if we do got labor down and, you know, 10, 20 takes of something, we would have never gotten through the shoot. And on top of it, um, I, I did promise them that we would keep it to 10 hour days and that we would have really good lunches each day. And so that was, that was definitely, <laughs> yeah, really to be honest. Okay. Well, that's the big one. What did you have for lunches? That's, that's the important question. Who wore many hats on, on this on this project was also the caterer, and we brought in local local lunches from different uh, really good food places in Montclair, New Jersey, and we always make sure that the crew was well fed and, and taken care of because that's one of those things that doesn't happen sometimes on low budget films, and especially you know if everybody is you know this was truly a labor of love, and if if you don't take care of the people who are taking care of you, then then you're you're never going to get through it because you need to. You, I'm I'm a firm believer in you. You don't bring out the whip. You 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 know everybody's name. You're nice to everybody, and the, the more you treat people like people, the better you're, the better work you're going to get out of it. So it, it, it it's selfish on one level because um, I mean I, I generally generally really loved everybody on this, but at the same time is that if you treat if you treat everybody with the respect that they deserve, then you're going to get so much more out of them and they're going to watch your back and it all starts with food always absolutely yeah you know i'm i'm how difficult was the casting of this film you've got Kristen as sarah who is she knocks it out of the park and this is her first film um yeah. you know you've got jackie who comes in and who is you know her stage work in the past i think has served her well here your stand, a real standout is Vivian Landau as Grandma. She is pitch perfect. Yeah, she, you know, the, the whole thing with Vivian, if we had another, if you can bring us back on your show sometime and do another episode, that's just the casting of Vivian would take 45 minutes for you for us to tell the well, story because it's a very I'll, long, I'll, complicated, I'll, great story. I'll cut it down really quick. We we had another actress in, uh, in, that was supposed to play the part who I really love, and she she was ill. She had an injury and she was in a wheelchair and she couldn't do it. So we were scrambling to find someone else and we were looking and looking and looking. And I got Vivian on the phone and I said, "Is this Vivian?" You know, and, and she said, "Yes, it is, but I probably won't talk to you." And I said, "Dan, I think we we found <laughs> our, our our grandma. <laughs> she was very good." <laughs> You know, and then feeding off of her, you've got Marie Lindsay as Aunt Sunny, and the it's, two the yeah. two of them are just they're crown jewels for you. Well, you know, I know. I say, we 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 were so fortunate. It was a it was a great combination of, of really great veteran comedic actors and newcomers. Yeah, and the, I think the chemistry really works well. And one of the, one of the things that we talked about before we started shooting is that the the dialogue really speaks for itself that, you know, I was trying we were explaining to them they didn't they didn't need to act funny. They just needed to say these funny words. Because it was already there in the script and you know, you don't have if if it's funny to begin with, you don't you don't need to you basically just need to make the words believable and the humor's gonna come out. And we really looked out and we explained to them that we really wanted them to kind of almost talk over each other like a real family would. You know, a lot of times, you know, there's at this type of film, I need to have that rapid fire dialogue back and mm -hmm. forth, and let people talk as before the other person finishes, which was a nightmare for my sound man. But uh, it uh, it really makes it more believable because that's how, you know, there's no family that, I, especially in my family, you, you never can finish a sentence without somebody already else marching with their with their sentence. No, are you crazy? I, I can't imagine. In if I would reflect on my family for my entire life. Nobody stops and waits for the other person. Even if some, yeah. you know, even if my parents would say, you know, will you stop talking? 
No, you're still going to talk over that too when you're getting told to stop talking. It, it so and that's one of the great things you really believe all of these people are related. Uh, oh, good. You really believe that this is a real family, especially when we get to the insanity of Uncle Lenny and Uncle Donnie. Um, <laughs> right. This is a real. Well, and, they are related. <laughs> yes, I was going to say you guys made this a real family affair. Um, yes. Now, are these your brothers, it's so, Bill? Well, yes, it's two brothers. They were they were they were easy to get that way. Yeah, yeah. and and family works cheap too. Absolutely. Yeah. That's very important. Not, not, not mentally for Bill, unfortunately. They, they, took, they took their toll on him mentally, but yes, in terms of uh, their cost, it was, for me, it was, it was, uh, they, they were reasonable. Well, you know, and I have to say, for both of you, the Lenny and Donnie stuff and the Planet of the Apes running, running theme and joke in here, you had to get that right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You had to get that is the one thing in this film that is so specifically tailored to a cultural zeitgeist for apes fans. You had to get that right. How difficult was that and where the heck did you find Planet of the Apes underwear? <laughs> I actually made that. I actually had to make that because we uh they had to make those, yeah. <laughs> I made that. I made. I made the head with the, the DVDs that are on the top of the head. Um, I, I, you know, the, the, the interesting thing when you're shooting something this quick with the budget that we had, you, on one level you get to be more creative because you, you have to be because you don't have every luxury thrown at you. It's not like we could you know, go buy Planet of the Apes stuff. So we had to figure out ways to make things happen with what what we had. So for me, it was actually exciting because it's like, how do I make this work? We make it work well with what we're doing and, and have it all come together. So, yes, I, I made the Planet of the Xbox shorts, the head. Um, again, we lucked out with you know, actors who were believable that they could be middle-aged guys who were obsessed with the Planet of the Apes. Um, every, everything is a little serendipity you know, that the weather held out perfect for us because that day it was pouring rain until we went outside and we got, we got that sequence. So it was like everything... Yeah worked perfect for us and we actually got everything done in the eight days with 10 as 10 hour days and everybody went home happy well i have i have dan, to say you're you're so, just gonna say i'm sorry i just i was just gonna say dan made a whole bunch of those planet of the apes uh, uh underwear that, that we, a lot of them we didn't use so you know what i'm still wearing them why waste right so that's I, it I, <laughs> I was gonna say you know you have lovely seamstress skills I put one on TV. But I got it. I got to tell you, the whole the packaging, the head, and you open it up, and the DVDs are in there and all. I'm looking at that, and I'm like, wait a minute. I don't remember seeing any kind of packaging or merchandising like that. And it's like that would be the coolest marketing for Apes fans. Well, maybe, well, maybe we maybe we, we could sell it to them, and we can uh, you know we can get a little side profit going. I'm, I'm telling you. Nice. I'm telling you, because I was racking my brain because it looked so perfect for marketing campaigns. And I'm thinking, did I miss something? Did I not see this come out? Um, so applause, applause. <laughs> Good. You know, such, you know, this is multi-purpose, multitasker here. You know, talk about. Well, like the, again, the, the, the adoption offer still stands. <laughs> <laughs> you know, how how challenging or how kooky as you said it, Dan, how how challenging was the editing process of this? Because when you have this much comedy, um, it's like where do you cut? What do you leave on the floor? And where do you find that perfect pacing without going into overkill? Well, I have to say I did give props to Bill because most of it was there on the page before we even start shooting. We did some tweaking here and there, and then on set, you know, I call it the happy accident when you're there and you planned everything out, but then you get there and you realize, you know, it might be a little better if we just did this one extra thing and we would do it. And it would just add, you know, make certain scenes a little, a little funnier. But um, in terms of the editing, we um, 
going back to what I was saying before that I, we had such a great cast between Jackie Debit and, and Louis Mastillo and Kristen and Addison and Vivian and those wacky Rakuski brothers that when we went into each scene we were able to to really get the performances dead on right away so there's there wasn't a lot of takes of things so we ended up I mean, we, you know, obviously we got it, so we got it right, but we, and then we got the coverage of the scene that we needed to get. But within that structure, we, we would usually nail it with one or two takes. So as an editor, it wasn't like I had to sift through 50 takes of each scene and try to find the best. It was already there for me, so that kind of helped. But then the rhythm of it, again, you know, trying to keep the pattern of everybody talking over each other is that, you know, I come from a musical background. I have a band. Actually, some of my music's also in the uh, soundtrack is that really it, it cut it cut like it's like cutting music because you have to find that rhythm you have to find that that pace and you know it, it's pretty much that pace throughout the entire film that there's that quick the rhythm back and forth the, you know having like times to, to beats of music so having a, a, a music background helped with the editing because I, I cut it like beats of, of music to a certain degree and again just making the overlaps of dialogue so that it was not one person finishing and then the other person starting you know letting it feel like a real family would be talk, talking to each other mm. well i did catch one continuity issue in your in your editing dan In, you think you'll be the first person who actually bring this up. But in, in, in the third act, after Sarah and James leave, it's like, I'm done yeah. with you people. And then she comes back, and we go through the hole, the, open the door, the door's locked. Yeah. No, it's not locked. Grandma opens the door, and she's wearing the dark blue with uh, the white uh, floral yeah, print right. shirt. And as, the first person to catch that. And as Sarah and James walk through the door, we have a reverse angle, and she's wearing that the robin's egg blue shirt that so and i was like i even emailed clint and i said oh i love the film but he's got a boo-boo there yeah you need at least have you need to have at least have one gap in the film that's you know that that'll be the thing you know when you talk about the the uh the, the gaps that'll that'll be the big one but yeah, yeah you well, have well, to say you are the first person i you know i i showed it i showed it to bill like 20 times and and i finally said to bill did you notice the the continuity here and i finally had to point it out to him at a certain point but you know we unfortunately debbie, let me just cut in De debbie I, I was very very impressed that you caught that because nobody has and, and in fact i didn't and then with, we were going to try to change it and thing and i said you know just let it go it's it's like too much it's done it's done we can't you know it's like too much work to fix it so uh but i'm impressed that you got that <laughs> <laughs> that jumped out at me, and I was like, "No, no!" I was. You know, the, the outside shot when they're at the door with the grandmother. Uh, we shot that on day two, and then the then the the other scene when they walk through the door and they're in in for the rest of the scene. That was on day eight, and it was just one of those things that at the time we didn't know when she was going to change outfits because we. There's a scene in between where they, they get a little bloody and we didn't know if she was going to be in the same shirt or not. And it just was one of those, you know, when you're, when you're shooting in eight days and you're, you're worried about 372 things that, yeah. that, that, that only that one thing slipped through, I have to say, I'm, I'm not, I'm not as, as, as much as I'd love to fix it, it, it out of, if, if one out of 372 things went wrong, <laughs> the 371 things. I think I said to Dan, hey, and it's blue. It's both are blue. Nobody will see. Let it go. You know? <laughs> well, I uh, had... wrong. <laughs> you win. You win. We'll, we'll send you a free T-shirt. <laughs> Not that we have any, but... No, no, no. I think okay. I really think that you should put together DVD packaging and put Apes Underwear in, in you know, all the packages. <laughs> okay. That's okay. That's, what, that's what you really need. You know, I've got to ask you, Bill, one of the... One of the most incredible scenes that just the whole concept just had me in hysterics. Um, and again, because it, it actually related to my family, was in fact, dad is, you know, he's grandpa, he's buried in the backyard. And my mother right. always, my, always kept saying, you know, when I die, just dig a hole and throw me in the backyard. Don't spend the money. Right. And then when she finally was 
did pass and my father went to the cemetery and he got a plot and all he called me up from Philly and he goes, oh my God. And I thought he was having a heart attack and he goes, $23,000 and they don't bill you. You have to pay for it all at once if somebody's dying. And, he, he, and I said, well, you know, Prunie always said, just throw her in the backyard. He goes, I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it. So for me to see this with the little marker of dad and then the sign, you know, yeah. in crayon pointing down, that is hysterical. Exactly what you just said. And my father said, just bury me in the backyard. I don't care. <laughs> so that's where it came from. It's exactly the same thing. <laughs> right, and keeping it all in the family, that's a picture of my, my dad that's on the, oh, yeah. uh, the, the poster. <laughs> oh, my God. That just had me in stitches, guys. In stitches. Okay. And all I kept thinking is, damn, see? She was right. She could have just been thrown in the dirt in the backyard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, what for you Bill because you're also in the film as Dimpy, which is he, right. he is a strange little man. Yeah, absolutely. Where I'm did you... fall, fall, falling, falling far from the tree on that one either? <laughs> uh -oh. Where did you come up with the idea not just for Dimpy but for your performance of him and how you embodied him because he is it's so interesting to see what you do with him from a performance standpoint well it goes back to pennsylvania growing up in uh, near wilkesbury pennsylvania and there was a character you know when i was like you know 13 14 years old there was a guy that we knew called dimpy you I mean, we had a whole gang of kids so i wouldn't say i'm basing it the, the whole character on that one guy dimpy but i just absolutely love that name but it was it's sort of a mesh of all the different kids that i grew up with in 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 school and back in pennsylvania so i just sort of put them together and created that character oh my god i mean it's a great character but your performance is such a standout as you bring um, him to life and uh, I just got the biggest kick out of watching that. The whole look, oh, good. the look, and then first we, we've got him with an eye patch, and then there's no eye patch, and his explanations for things are just so off the wall ridiculous. You have to laugh. It was, it was cool. I thought it would be cool. <laughs> well, it was. You know, a grown up kind of sort of pirate going to a rock concert. Um, yeah. That's right. That's very funny, yeah. And who puts post-it notes on cakes? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys have, you inserted so many little touches that really not only add humor, but make this so real. You know, little things like the post-it on the, on the sheet cake uh, for Mother's Day. Would, did you have that oh, yeah, written? Yeah. Did you have that written in the script, Bill, or are these things you guys, you know, you Dan and you guys came up with on the day of these happy accidents? Well, well, well some things, a lot of things were. Well, I wouldn't say a lot, but some things were ad libbed, and I, can't, you know, I'll be honest with you, I can't remember that particular thing. If that was, you know, we did that right then and there, or just came up with the idea. I can't remember if that was in the script or not. But certainly, there were things that we just ad-libbed or, or came up with the idea about an example uh, 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 oh uh, Graham, uh, uh, Roger the father what comes with the, the big uh, Turkish woman she towers over him and initially that was going to be a, 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 a Latina girl I thought it would be nice to have like a you know Latina girl and she speaks Spanish and all that but we really didn't have anybody so we have this actress and I thought well, this is funny and then uh, she spoke in, in Turkish she spoke in, and, and it just sounded so weird that I said well I sound like Klingon so that was sort of you know ad lib that, that wasn't in the script yeah, I mean, it, you know, so much of this, it is, it feels so organic and so real. And I think that's one of the, well, that's, that's one of the fun things about this old school slapstick kind of comedy. That I think today's generation, they've gotten away from that. They really need to go back and look at some Harold Lloyd or some Buster Keaton or something. Uh, and really uh, get a feel for how this works. Because this yeah, you're right. this is so much funnier 
than the, oh, let's be subtle and, you know, oh, well, it's it's built in the character and you watch this play out in rom-coms and, and it's like, okay, there's nothing funny. It's not yeah, funny. Yeah. yeah. But this is, well, this is laugh out loud funny. This is the kind of film we well, need right now. Thank you. Well, we appreciate you watching it, too. <laughs> you know, what... What would each of you say was the most challenging aspect of bringing this crappy Mother's Day to life beyond eight days? Um, <laughs> that's in a category all of its own. But what would you say was the most challenging aspect of bringing this to life? Well, I would I would jump in right away and say when we talked about it earlier, it was the casting. That that would that I think that was very challenging, and we succeeded with that, which I was, which great. But that was challenging. Uh, I let Dan answer the other things because uh, you know he he had to do all that work. <laughs> Well, yeah. I, from from my perspective, the the most anxiety driven thing was that it, everything was laid out in advance. When we you got all the locations, everything was all planned to to the point of knowing that we could pull it off in eight days. But then there was the fear throughout the entire film that if one thing went wrong, it would be a house of dominoes, and everything it would just everything else would fall apart. So, uh, from my perspective, it was that. Once we got through each day, it'd be like, okay, one down, two, you know, <laughs> seven to go, and then four down, four to go. And for, so for me, it was always that, when is the other shoe going to fall and something's going to go wrong that, that will muck up the rest of the, the production? And I have, I have to say, you know, that never happened. So uh, until the, the wrap on the eighth day, my, my, my agital level was at a, at a constant high of, okay, <laughs> make this happen and make it and make it another good day. And I have to say that thanks to the cast and crew, because if it wasn't for them, you know, you know I, I have to say I, I wore a lot of hats and, you know, was heavily involved in this, but flip side, you know, a film like this you can't make on your own. You, you need to have an unbelievably great script to begin with, great talent to pull it off, because, you know, you can have a great script and if you have bad actors, it, you know, it doesn't make a difference or vice versa. And it all fell in together. So as a director, for me, it was kind of like, okay, create the create the, the scenario of how we're going to do this and then let everybody do what they're good at doing and then sit back and let them do their part. I'll do my, I'll do my part, they do their part, and let's all meet at the end. It's something that turned out well. You know, Dan, I'm curious for you as a director, because you've done documentaries in the past, you've done documentary shorts, um, we got to go back a ways um, for a narrative. Do you find a big difference in your directorial style and editing style between documentaries and doing a narrative feature like this? Oh, definitely. I mean, with documentaries, um, you come in, you walk into the idea of what you're doing, and then you basically don't write the script till after you finish shooting. Whereas in the film, obviously, you start with the script and you shoot the script. But a lot of times with a documentary, you think this is what it's going to be, and then when you go to edit it, you realize you have some other story or you have a little bit of a twist in the story, and you don't, and it's never, you're not following a script of how you're going to put the documentary together, so you're actually always writing it afterwards. Um, I have to say one of the great things for me is I used to work on Law and Order, the original Law and Order back in the 90s, and I started as the uh, gaffer, the, lighting, the main lighting guy, and the great thing, it's such a great learning experience because basically on episodic television, you're essentially shooting the same story over and over again each week. I mean, we're under the, under the you know, the, the setup of what it's going to be. Obviously, the stories are different each week, but it's the same principal idea each week. Are you going to find this, and it's going to lead up to here? So for me, being on the set every day, I would I would see you know a hundred different directors basically direct the same TV show each week. Mm -hmm. So it was a great learning experience in the sense that I saw which directors were what worked and what didn't work, or you know if they're shooting the same thing, why it only took a half hour to shoot it this way as opposed to three hours to shoot it this way or you know if you talk to an actor this way how are you going to get a better performance as opposed to if you talk to the actor this way they're just going to give you a worse performance so it was the greatest, greatest learning experience for me because you, you basically you're, you're on set with that you know hundreds of different directors doing doing the same scene so you pick up what's good and what doesn't work and hopefully you know you carry that on to your own work yeah, and 
and Bill, you know, here you are, you've been in front of the camera for, you know, bouncing around for a while and, you know, one-offs and all different, all kinds of different shows. And, but you're also now producing, now you've written a, a feature script. Do you see yourself in the future now vacillating amongst them all, just jumping back and forth? You know, this was so much fun to do this and, and write it and do it that, I, that this is what I really would like to just continue doing this. We, we're, we're talking, but we are writing another script now, Dan and I, a rock and roll uh, musical. Uh, and, uh, you know, we play around with the idea of having a sequel called, you know, Crappy Father's Day. So uh, I don't know if that'll happen, but uh, I, I really enjoyed this experience. So I'd like to like continue that way. Well, you could do Crappy's fa Crappy Father's Day and go visit James's family this time. <laughs> That's right. I'm thinking series. I'm thinking it. series. You know, I'm thinking TV series. There's so many great stories with all these characters that you um, could just turn into a TV series. These are great characters. They really are, and you could take you can flesh them out and take them in so many directions. I mean, I think that would be just absolutely fabulous. I would love to see something like that. Well, I think Father's Day has been neglected. There aren't that many Father's Day movies, so I figure there's a, there's a place for it. That That's just it. You know, everybody, they give Mom her due, and they can't, Hallmark keeps saying, don't forget Mom, don't forget Mom. But what about Dad? Dad needs, yeah. Dad is forgotten yeah. here. So, that's right. How can we forget Mom? You keep reminding us. Come that, on. See? That's it. But Dad, Dad is the stalwart. Dad is the strong one. Dad is the one that's going to, he's going to teach you how to change the oil in your car and change a tire. That's right. I did with my son. I just did that with my son. <laughs> so we need a father's, we need a crappy Father's Day film. Okay, we're going to do it. I'm there. I'm there. <laughs> so we'll see how this one does. Hopefully this one will do, do well and we'll, uh, we'll be calling for one. To say, yeah, as wacky as this film is and as crazy as all these the family members are, you know, what I love about it, and it comes through Bill's writing, is that there, there's a lot of love there on top of it. I mean, it, yeah. it's, yeah, as, as, as crazy as they are and as much as they scream at each other, you know it's all coming from a place of love. So, I mean, that, that to me, this makes it that more real. Yeah. <laughs> to a certain degree, because you, 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 people that you, you would you know, jump in a bus for in front of that you, you know, that you're also going to yell at them. You yeah. stupid idiot, I love you. You know, I mean, like my dad telling people, you know, if they didn't scream enough, if they didn't insult each other, then there'd be a problem. Right. It, it, it's, yes. it's another manifestation of love, and you really get that familial love in this film. At the end of the day, okay. without a doubt. Ah, uh, Guys, this has been so much fun talking to you, so much fun watching the film, even with the one continuity faux pas. No. Don't tell anybody. Give us one. Give us one. Give us one. Keep that to yourself, please. I can't wait to see what the two of you put put, put your heads together and come up with next. And I can't wait to talk to you again. Oh, it was Thank great. You, it was and like I mentioned, the, the, adopt, the adoption uh, notice is still up for grabs if you want to. Hey, it I'm on board. I'm on board. Okay. Anytime. Okay. Oh, guys, thank you so, so much. Sure, real pleasure. Thank you so much. Bye bye. It's available you. now. It's available now. That film. That's and right. VOD uh, everywhere. It sure everywhere. is. Yeah. It is out. Every, everybody can get it now, and they should for Mother's Day. And get a sheet oh, cake. Excellent. Get from your lips. Get apes underwear and a sheet cake for mom, and you're set. <laughs> there you go. It'll be, it'll be the new Mother's Day thing to to wear ape underwear. See, look at that. We solved the world's problems. Ah, oh, guys, thank you. Sure, all righty. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Bye.